Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video about an interesting problem I had and how I solved it. Uh, this is a controller for the original Xbox, but it's, in, it's a third party controller. And I got a couple of these in a sale a few months ago. And I noticed that both of the control sticks were in pretty bad shape. I mean, this one's got all the rubber coming off. I had another one with this same condition. These, all the sticks were in terrible shape. And I made up my mind that I was just going to replace the sticks, uh, which should be easy because uh, I've done it before with the uh, official controller S that uses these sticks. And anyone who's played the Xbox 360 a bunch will know that these are the same uh, control sticks as the Xbox 360 controller. So I ordered a bunch of replacement sticks online, came in a big pack and I replaced them on the official controller. And I thought, okay, well, I'll just, I'll do the same for the off-brand controller. This is a Gaming Edge brand controller. But when I opened it up, I found that there was a problem. So, let's take a look. This is the 360 controller, which I was planning to use, brand new. And this is the gaming edge stick. Flip them around, you see we got kind of an issue here. The hole in the middle that's designed to go into the internal component is slightly bigger on the 360 version. So if I were to put this on, it would be way too loose and it really wouldn't control too well. So I thought, uh, like, what am I going to do now? And I came up with a slightly, I don't know, kind of ghetto solution. But I took some Gorilla Glue and I filled in the tip, uh, the, the inside, the hole there, as much as I can. I coated the analog stick component on the controller and I just stuck it in there and I waited a full day. And this is the result. So I, the sticks actually fit just fine. I mean, I took a look at it a bunch and they are exactly the same size. They are no different in size. The only difference is the way they are inserted into the controller. Alright? So these sticks came out okay. I don't know if I used enough glue or maybe I didn't let it cure long enough but they turn, I tested it and the sticks turn all directions just fine. The only thing I don't like is that now uh, to press down on the stick that's like an extra button um, and it's kind of difficult to press that now. You don't get the same feedback as before. You don't get that nice click especially on the left stick. So I think my mistake was maybe after like half a day to just wiggle it around a little bit and maybe press down on it to just to make sure the glue isn't going to prevent me from doing that. So overall it came out pretty good. I tested it. It works fine. The only thing again that I don't like is you don't get the same feedback when you click and also one of these ended up being a little bit loose enough that I can uh, wiggle around. So I mean if I'm turning it a lot I could feel it kind of shift position. It's not really supposed to do that. Um, I'm going to try it again and I'm going to show you how exactly I did it. So I'm going to take these sticks off and try to replace it with the Xbox 360 sticks. Alright, so I'm going to start taking this apart. Okay, once you take off the uh, six or rather seven case screws, you can lift off the back panel and there's a bunch more screws to take out. Um, I'm going to want to give you a word of caution. The rumble motor is attached by very flimsy wires over here. If you let it drop, because it's pretty heavy, these wires can break off. And uh, this end is going to be fine because it's uh, attached with hot glue. But these definitely might come off and it happened to me. Last time I tried this and I had to solder the wire back onto the same spot, which is very, very annoying. So I would definitely be careful handling 
this particular component uh, for you guys who've never done this before. There's two more screws on the PCB and two more where the rumble motor was. So I'm going to take those off now. Once you get all the screws out, you can finally take the board out, put away all the plastic pieces, and flip it around to get at the actual control sticks. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to take these off, show you what it looks like. You, all you do is just pull it. Pull the stick out upwards, and it'll come out. And what it's attached to is this metal rod that can move in all directions. And the metal rod is supposed to go all the way through this little hole in the bottom to give you maximum control. So we're going to take these out because they're gross, they're coming apart, and nobody wants to put their hands on it. This one's a little bit stubborn. Alright, so we're going to throw these away. I'm going to replace them with brand new ones. Let me show you what it looks like if I were to put no glue on it. I would just insert it like that. Look how, look how loose it is. There's a lot of like movement in all directions without actually turning the, uh, the stick. So it doesn't, it doesn't really fit. Um, I mean, again, it is the same size, so as if I can just fill in this extra space, we should be fine. And I obviously showed you before I used uh, Gorilla Glue. I thought about using, like, something stronger, like epoxy, uh, but I thought, I thought against it for two reasons. First, that's meant to be permanent, <laughs> and I don't know, these sticks are going to wear out again one day, maybe, and if somebody ever wants to take it off, they're not going to be able to because there's epoxy in it, and it's just never, ever going to come out, uh, or at least not without some like monumental effort. And number two is that if you make a mistake, you can't really undo it. Again, the whole permanent glue kind of thing is just... that turned me off right away. Um, this Gorilla Glue is kind of a step above a, a regular like Elmer's like elementary school glue and it's pretty strong but also the consistency is just liquidy enough to, so that you can like actually move it somewhat and not like lose all of the uh, all of the bonding. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, it's just a lot, you have a lot more leeway when you're making like, when you're doing a project like this. So I use a special tool to apply the Gorilla Glue. I don't know if you guys have access to it, but uh, it's called like a toothpick. And what I'll do is I'll take a very, very small amount of Gorilla Glue. You don't need a lot. It's already coming out. That's already like way too much. And just dab it onto the uh, toothpick. We're going to take our new stick. And I'm going to try to drop the glue inside. And just fill it up like that. Be careful it doesn't just hang out on the surface. I want it to actually just get in there. That could be kind of difficult. Probably best to use a small amount of glue starting out. And turn the flashlight on so you can see better.
I'm going to take off this extra glue because that's a little bit too much. I just want it to fill in the hole right there. I never said this was a, you know, a professional solution. This is just what I came up with that kind of works. I guess I'll find out in a couple of years if it was worth it, you know, see how long the sticks hold up. And another reason that I wanted to make this video is because I kind of want to get other people's input on it. Like, what what would you use if you really wanted to get the 360 sticks to work on this when uh, the slots don't fit? And, uh, yeah, I'm just really looking for some kind of better solution. It's, as much as this works, it doesn't feel like uh, it's like a permanent long-term solution you know okay so for the next part I got got it in in the stick part now I want to get it on the actual controller and I'm gonna coat as much as I can and I'm just gonna coat it in the glue this is a, again this is a great this particular uh, kind of grill glue it's, it has a great consistency so I never really got to worry about it spilling everywhere which is what I was afraid of I was afraid of like what if it spills down into like the inner components and totally ruins it you know worst case scenario you put the stick back on and you can't move it at all and it's just all glued together and I definitely didn't want that but this is pretty solid enough that like it's not dripping that's what I was looking for in the beginning. And I'm going to try something a little bit different this time. Instead of just sitting and letting it do its thing, I'm going to, uh, every 12 hours, I'm going to try and like move it a little bit just to make sure it's not sticking in, in the wrong spot. Make sure it's sticking exactly where I want it to be. Uh, when I put it back on, I noticed that there was a horizontal uh, slot to it so I kind of want to match it to the stick as best I can not that it matters I mean there's all, so much extra space uh, but I'm just gonna line it up put it in the hole that's what she said and push all the way down and move it so that the dots are vertical and then push it all the way down line it up and that's it now we just wait for it to the glue to cure I'm gonna wait about like 12 hours and I'm gonna like move it around a little bit okay so I'm gonna start working on the other stick which is the same process so I won't show it and I'm gonna put it back together and uh, I guess in a couple of days I can give an update about how it went in the description um, I think that's the end of the video uh, thanks for watching